welcome, Lionel. I'm really looking forward to hearing your words. Thank you. Well, I come from Honduras. Uh, I grew up uh, not far from a Mayan uh, city made of stone. And uh, there was a river nearby, a river that the Mayas considered uh, to be sacred. And to me, there is something sacred in every river, especially a river that is called the Manawatu. Uh, and somehow, this river has been making its way into my poetry. So I will read two water-related poems today for you. For you, um, I've been writing about stones in Spanish a lot, so I, I'm writing about that right now in English too. And so hopefully you'll be able to, to understand what I'm saying. Uh, this poem is called What Stones Know. Nothing happens if I say stone. But if I say stone from the depths of the Manawatu River, the stone remembers a time before the name when it was just a hard thing polished by the waters. I bring home a few rocks from the river. My son emerges from his universe of virtual warfare and picks up a pebble that might have been touched by Tepeti Teahueahue during the musket wars. This pebble existed before the first Rangatira, before Cook, and before the immigrant who's coming through customs with new names for pebbles and rocks. We travel to remote places to hear the language spoken by rocks as ancient as the pebble no one notices by the side of the road. Only those rocks touched by a miracle or mere chance are safe from the anonymity of archeological waste. Stones act in mysterious ways. The pebble that killed Goliath is now thrown by a boy at a military tank. A man about to be hung kicks a stone and for a brief moment is a child again. A woman is stoned to death by the Taliban, but what do stones know about Sharia law? Did God, time, or nature breathe death into those stones? The woman could not be saved even if the thing we call rock or stone did not exist. Will the stone used to kill be as lethal if we call it by any other name? Could it be taken back to the river where I will find it so that it can be passed from a Maori warrior to a boy who fights in real time? Even before his man I was trapped under the names Kohatu or Stone, this hard thing was already breathing life or death into the universe. And the, the second poem, is called One and a Half Liters of Maori Mythology. Like most folks, I get my one and a half liters of Maori mythology on a daily basis. It comes in the form of fresh rain from that falls in the heart of the Kaimai Ranges. But before passing through my lips, the droplets permeate deep into ancient rock and through a natural filtration process lasting up to 50 years push their way to the surface from the labyrinth of aquifers. The water emerges so pure, it is crystal clear and appears in a sure blue. Then, it is baptized as Kiwi Blue and bottled by Coca-Cola Amat Limited. Sodium, chloride, and other essences are added to preserve its purity. And to make sure it is consumed while it's still fresh, each bottle comes with an expiration date. Yes, it seems water, even if it is ancient, does expire. Thank you.